Jonah, you you pissed off everyone again. I did it. I did it again. I I literally set everyone's hair on fire <laughs> on, on Twitter. Dude, but, did uh, Ansem, Ansem ratioed you so hard. Everybody ratios me, man. I just, I put my thoughts out there. I'm like, hey, this is what I think. And people are like, fuck you. So on the one hand, I'm, you know, I'm getting good engagement for the Thousand X podcast. On the other hand, I'm like, Jesus, people are ruthless out there. Dude, people, people just love to hate you. This isn't a new thing, Avi. This precedes crypto. But you know, they, they love to hate me, so they keep me around. The more that I, I watch you interact on Twitter as I've seen your account grow, it just, it just gets better and better and better. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Thousand X. We are at 42K on Bitcoin, which was everybody's price target a month ago. And so now that we're here, what do you do? Well, stay tuned. We will not be answering that question for you because that is financial <laughs> advice. <laughs> but, you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully by the end of the conversation, you'll know even less than what you knew at the beginning. So should we should we jump into it? Yeah, let's jump into it. Here's here's what happened with my tweet. So uh, I. I was talking to some friends, you know, just just from outside the crypto world. Yes, those people exist. And I was talking about how crypto is sending and they're like, huh, isn't it dead? I thought crypto was like 2021 and then it just kind of ended. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like the, the, the price of Bitcoin just hit 40K. It's going bananas. And, you know, do you own any crypto? No. And, you know, it sort of brought me back to this institutional um, kind of saying that a good percentage of your portfolio to hold in crypto is 2%. That's what like responsible financial advisors recommend to responsible clients who are looking to preserve wealth and take like a little bit of risk. But if you go out on the street, Avi, and you ask 10 people, do you own any crypto? You know, I think you're going to get five to seven no's, you know? So I was thinking, Hey, let me just send out something like if you're not uncomfortable, long five, you know, kind of targeted at those no coiner people. Like if you're not, if you're not like starting to to put, you know, a decent chunk of your portfolio into this, meaning like five to ten percent, and you're just gonna feel stupid again, like you probably did the last two bull cycles in crypto. Um, but then I obviously posted that in the wrong place. I posted it on crypto Twitter. Yeah, I was I was I was gonna say like that that was that was the main issue is your your audience just a bunch of degenerates. <laughs> so, you know, when, when you, when you post something like that, I mean, look, I think if I had 10% of my net worth in crypto, I would feel horrendous because I did at one point like, and I felt horrendous and then I dove into it full time and I still right. felt horrendous because then it fucking went to zero, but like it's, yeah, it's, it's not enough. I if mean, you believe I mean, in when this you're, shit, if, if you yeah. really believe in this stuff, I mean, yeah, dude, have, have 80% of your net worth in crypto. Fine. Rip it. Um, I mean, I, I have, I have had, I don't think at any point in my life I've ever had, since I discovered crypto, I've had less than 50% except for, um, in 2022. Yeah. I think, I think that was, that was, that was basically it. And even then, you know, I still had, a, when I say crypto exposure, I still had a, just a bunch of USDC. I think like at all moments in my life, I've had more than 50% of my net worth in crypto on like crypto rails. That's interesting. I mean, it just, it's just like every, everything's so much easier. I mean, like, for example, I'm going to Miami this weekend. It's like I needed, I needed to rent a, rent a place. And guess, guess what? I paid for it in USDC. <laughs> and the best part about it was the guy sent me, sent me a wallet with a linked ENS. I won't dox it. But uh, it had Shiba in it and ApeCoin. And <laughs> I, I almost felt like I should reach out to this guy and be like, dude, let me help you. <laughs> buy some, buy, some, you know, buy like some. Subscribe buy, on the Thousand X podcast YouTube buy, page. Buy some Harry Potter, Obama, Sonic Inu. Come on, like you're you're in last year's you're in last year's shit coins. I saw a new one. It's 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 spelled Froge, but it's it's probably pronounced like Frog. Uh, Froge Froge is accurate. Um, dude, they're, they're, meme coins are meme coins are popping off. I mean, you have big time ripping. Ordi Ordi is such a good rip fest. Because it's the meme, it's like the Bitcoin meme coin. And so many things are happening on Bitcoin right now. And people are actually trying to build and Bitcoin NFTs are popping off and meme coins on Bitcoin are popping off. I, I really do think that, it, you know, 
people thought that that move was priced in. I really don't think it's priced in. I think if you spend the next two weeks of your life looking at three different areas, I mean, we've covered AI a lot and I'm still very bullish on AI, um, but I, I think you, you, you cover, you cover AI, you cover things that are happening on Bitcoin, and then you just dive into NFTs on both Solana and Ethereum. I think you're going to have a really good time in the next six to six to twelve months because we're at the point of the cycle. I think NFTs on Ethereum are gonna are gonna pop. We're at we're at the point of the cycle, Jonah, where Bitcoin needs to fall apart for alts not to run. Like you need you, Bitcoin at thirty eight k, ten percent. You know, Bitcoin at thirty five. The weeks after that, if Bitcoin stabilizes, is actually when alts tend to run the hardest. So yeah, you might get caught on a leverage drawdown. Right, if you're over levered, if you're one of the DGENs who got really mad at your tweet because you were 300% levered and then you get taken out on a 10% move, right? You eviscerate your portfolio. But if you just survive and you find the right areas to allocate to right now, I mean, this is the freest money you're going to see in a, you know, in a long time, not financial advice. But I mean, this is like, the, the, like this market dynamic is, the, this is where, you know, you, you 3X and a, Two weeks. Um, I mean, just and, and then you kind of look across the board. Uh, Jonah, you've always been ridiculously bullish. I think I've been much more cautiously bullish than you. But inflows into ETP products are are picking up. See me, see me. Futures are still are still buying. Crypto native leverage is basically non existent. Uh, you have alt you have altcoins doing well, but not crazy well. So the froth, you know, I wouldn't point at the market and say there's immense froth i'd say that there's like you know it's like a, a poorly done cappuccino a little bit <laughs> a little bit of, a little bit of froth i mean look like terrible. i i've been yeah. bullish i've been ridiculously bullish but i haven't been ridiculously bullish the things that have gone parabolic like i wasn't ridiculously bullish solana i wasn't ridiculously bullish you know stacks or the puzzy pudgy hey, we were we were floor. post uh, we post were, anatoly we got post bullish. anatoly we got super bullish yeah um, that is true, but like I wasn't bullish at, at eight or ten or fifteen back then. I was like, man, Solana is just reeling right now. Like, is it even going to participate in this next upswing, or is it going to be like, you know, polka dot or near? Actually, near just ripped. Everything's fucking ripping. But the point is, like, I was bullish the slow stuff, and now I feel out of my element because, like, my old trad five brain, like, I, I can understand Bitcoin and ETH, and now I can understand Solana because Anatoly held my hand through it. But I just can't get my head around some of these altcoins and believe in them enough to like, you know, throw serious money at them. You don't need to believe in them, Jonah. You just need to know that people are going to gamble on them. I mean, think about think about this argument for for AI, for example. Nobody knows how to value anything related to AI. Nobody, like nobody. Uh, OpenAI valued at what, 80 billion? I mean, 90 before they lost their CEO. The thing could have maybe, nobody knows how that was actually going to make real money. At the, at the end of the day, they just believe that you have a technology powerful, strong enough. You have a dream big enough. And you'll make you'll make a ton of money, and crypto is the epitome of you have a dream big enough you make money. So not only do you have real AI products in crypto like a cash network that are actually solving a problem, the upper bound is, I dare say it, unlimited, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like like the like the and then it, it, combine that with the fact that the, it's the only way for your average person to bet on AI. I mean, there's NVIDIA, but I guess that's priced to the moon. Dude, how, how big is NVIDIA? I think it's a trillion, trillion one. It's huge. It's like a fourth or fifth biggest market cap thing. Yeah. I'm not talking about, um, you know, betting on AI derivatives. There are a lot of ways to bet on AI derivatives. But how do you bet on AI products? You can buy Microsoft. Right, but that's again like a derivative, and it's, you could be an accredited like, investor like, and, and invest in like a you know Silicon Valley style startup fund. What's but. what's a pure play? I want to only invest in an AI product, other than like Cow Akash. I mean, Live Peer. I mean, right. I mean, you have these things in crypto. Yeah, near maybe to some extent, although that's more of a derivative play. Um, but unlike unlike the GameStop Reddit situation, and yes, GameStop is running again, and the Reddit crowd is back. Like unlike that, um, these these tokens are actually attached to projects that could, in theory, deliver value one day. Um, it's not just like a bunch of 
bunch of random dudes in their basements trying or their mom's basements like deciding to squeeze some hedge fund out of a short like these you know these these projects in crypto like they they could have utility i look i think D-Pin, wow that was such a good sign in hindsight for crypto i'm looking at the G- gme chart it ripped from 12 to 17 and then bitcoin broke up i mean i think i think you know we were betting on bitcoin breaking up regardless you know what I like about this rally, Avi, is that I I feel kind of smart again. I don't feel stupid anymore. Um, I feel a bit vindicated. Like I'm not, you know, obviously you know from the internet that that I'm not like I, I haven't just like five xed my net worth on this, so not not much has changed. But at the same time, like I feel I feel vindicated, and I think a lot of people do. And I think that you know you can see in the responses to this tweet that everybody pissed off, like that pissed everybody off. Like suddenly everyone's got their, their sort of their confidence back. They got their swagger back. It is, we're not just like this ragtag group of people that get made fun of by our friends and relatives anymore. Like this, this shit is sending and it shows no signs of slowing down because we still haven't de bottleneck the institutions who ultimately will be more interested at, at these prices than they would if, if we were just sort of like festering sideways on the lows or near the lows. Yeah. I mean, that to me makes me want to sell, but you know, I get it because the moment, the moment, the moment you, you start, you start to feel like, okay, I was right. It's working. It's easy. Um, but I mean, I, I think, I think the, the, you know, that the sort, sort of memeing, memeing aside, it, it's a little hard to fight the flows at this point. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think I, I like gun to my head. I don't know where Bitcoin's going to go. It could range between 38 and 42. It could sell off down to 35 it could go to 48 i'm 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 just not i'm, I'm not in the habit of selling bitcoin uh and during par- during 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 parabolic advances until you get a crazy move like you get you get a nuts move and then what you do is you just barbell it into alts so then you hold some cash to buy stuff for the inevitable drawdown and then you rotate to stuff that just hasn't really moved aggressively i'm waiting patiently, but I have started buying the most hated coin in crypto, which is Ethereum. People really hate it. <laughs> and, I can tell. And, I love it. But you know, I, I, I do think that the, the mentality and the narrative around Ethereum right now is just so, so, so downtrodden. I mean, ETH maxis are just, they're just nowhere to be found. Uh, everybody's rotated to to Solana, or you know, you're buying you're buying Bitcoin. Just across the board, everybody's focus has shifted off of ETH. But it almost it will seem obvious in hindsight when once the Bitcoin ETF comes out, or once Bitcoin's priced in, right? Maybe we trade forty four before the ETF, and that's the price in, and then this starts to happen. Is people are just going to talk about the ETH ETF? That's next. And it's so, and it, it, by the way, if the ETH ETF allows for you to stake ETH, it becomes like this insane product. Yeah. Right. Where it's just going to, it's, 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 it's an ETF that gives you upside to crypto that you're getting yield on. Dude, this thing is going to go parabolic. And I, for some reason, people aren't talking about, and I'm probably early. That's why I'm happy to, you know, I'll, I'll be buying over the next two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month. Uh, could could go sooner depending depending on price action. But at some point, that narrative shifts. I think that some point is at some point in the next six weeks, that narrative shifts. And then ETH is at 3K before you blink. Um, and everybody that, you know, was trashing ETH was on team BTC that was on team Solana is going to gonna, gonna flip over. And by the way, I hold no ill will to people that flip like that. I flip like that. Right. Uh, I you, know. But you, 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 you buy, you buy, you buy a position, you get, you're like, ah, you know, a lot of these people are like memeing around, right. They don't, you know, a lot of these people don't actually believe it anyway. And, and but, but in, in order, one thing that I've seen is like, in order, in order to, to, to hold a position for a two X to three X, you sort of need to convince yourself that you do like it long-term. Um, like a lot of Solana bulls that I know, like they would look me in the eye two months ago and they would say, Solana is the best thing that has ever been built ever. I can't imagine owning another L1. I can't imagine ETH ever doing well again. Solana's and then Solana 3Xs 
and the good the good ones are looking at me and they're going, mm, I don't know, really not that much on Solana, <laughs> guys. <laughs> like, Look, like, you know, I, and and I appreciate it, right? Because 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 in order to hold for that three X, you got to convince yourself. <laughs> yeah, you you do, and you yeah. I mean, Solana is one of those coins that that you can actually believe in, and and even on the lows. However, like. I don't know. I, I built my TradFi career by trading around my position. Like you don't have, it, it's not black or white. You don't have to be all in or flat or short, right? Like you, you could love something and it could rip and you don't really see why it ripped so much. And then you, you don't, you're like, ah, should I sell? Should I not sell? It, it's not, it shouldn't be a debate. Like you can peel off 10% of your position or 15% of your position and take a little bit of profit. And if it keeps going, you're still long. And if it goes back down, then you just buy it right back. You know, like it's it's a good way to generate some returns around things that that go up and down. Uh, apparently, crypto Twitter now thinks that crypto can only go up, but you know the memories of, of the collapse are still fresh for a lot of us. So, you know, if you're if you're undecided about your position, you can always just tailor the size of it. It's not it's no there's no shame in that. You don't have to like if you're out, you can tweet again. You know, you can tweet like I'm 150 percent all in and beat your chest all you want, but like. You know, you could quietly do some smart stuff, sell a little high, buy a little back low and, and keep going. Now, I wouldn't be selling Bitcoin or ETH right now. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Solana, I'm mulling, peeling a little bit off my position because I just, like you said, you know, it, this is a narrative driven rally. It fucking 8x from the lows and there's still not a ton going on. I believe in the promise of it, but I'm debating like whether this is the right price to to remain as long as I am. So, you know, eh, maybe, maybe time to take a little bit of profit and trade these things around. Like you said, if people rotate into ETH, then maybe Solana will come off a bit. I don't know. Don't kill me, Solana fans. Like ultimately though, when you, when you evaluate the reward, you also have to think about the risk. Like the risk, if, you, if you're thinking, if you're going for a two X or on something and you're looking at ETH and Solana, Solana in the 60s and ETH around 2000, your risk with Solana is way fucking higher, right? Uh, there's no doubt about that in the short run. It's just a more volatile token. Like there are metrics of realized volatility and Solana, you know, I haven't run it today or recently on Solana, but Solana involves just through the roof. ETH is a lot more stable. So your risk is lower if you, if you go into ETH at this point. Um, I agree with what you're saying. Also, you know, I think that that some of the the ways that you know that people are emboldened right now, besides just reading crypto Twitter, NFT prices like pudgy penguins, yeah. fucking ten x. You know, this is this is what people do when they start to feel like they have a little bit of extra cash and they're ready to gamble. You know, I I agree with you, and 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 NFTs are kind of interesting because the okay, so just just some numbers, the ETH market cap is about nine times, or I, I think eight eight and a half times bigger than the Solana fully diluted value. Uh, but the ETH NFT market cap is about 20x as large hmm. as Solana NFT market cap. And I think that the crossover between the people that are like likely to pour a lot of money into NFTs and Solana is much higher than the people that are likely to buy a bunch of NFTs and, and, and own well, ETH other than the ETH you know, whales uh, that I think are going to rotate some of their profits into ETH NFT. I think a lot of the new money that's coming in. So Solana NFTs, just to recap... What was I bullish on? I was bullish on AI. I was now I'm bullish on Solana NFTs. Which ones? The Chads, the the Seagull, yeah, the Mad Lads, Quex. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I think, I think that Solana for a trade or for like a long term. No, for like the next six to twelve months. Cycle you just, bags. You, you just hold them, and then when things are like, when you wake up, and the first thing you do is you refresh your portfolio, and it's up. 20% and it's the eighth day in a row that it's up 20% and you're dreaming of buying a private Island. That's when I, that's when you sell. That's like that, 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 that's my mentality for this market right now is that this is, this rally is so powerful, very strong. Reminds me a lot of 2020, 2021. It just pattern matches kind of nicely that the, the way that this ends is in a bang, um, you know, and then what probably ends up happening is, is, is it probably looks a little bit like 2021 where it's, it's more of a rounded top than a complete blow off and then collapse. Um, cause I think that 
the the reason that you don't get those complete blowoffs anymore in a, in a in a market like this is just because there are too many larger institutional guys that do move a little bit more slowly than there were in 2017. So that's when you get the more rounded tops, like in 2021, where you you blow off, you come down, but then you come back up a bit, and then sort of meander sideways. So I think it took you know it basically basically took a full month to top in, in 2021. I think you'll see something you'll see something similar here. I disagree. I kind of disagree. I think that I think that you would. There's obviously a lot of buying going on right now. People are emboldened. There's you can't fight the flows. That's what we always say on this podcast. But right now, you know, there's there aren't a lot of sellers. Um, and I think the music is going to stop when the institutions finally have this gateway via the ETF. I think the ETF is going to bring in a ton of capital. I think it's all going to go parabolic very quickly when that happens. And I think you're, you know, in the absence of a major use case that's bringing in tens or hundreds of millions of actual u- end users to use products that are built on top of crypto, I don't think you're, you're going to have this steady buying going on. I think what you're you're going to see is another, you know, casino style speculative frenzy like we've seen without any fundamental kind of sustenance to it, any follow through. So I think it's going to go parabolic. And then I think at some point the price is going to be quite high. The music's going to stop. And then I think it's going to collapse back down kind of like spring 2021 style until it finds buyers again. Um, I think in order for you to, to like level, I'm almost done. Sorry, I'm just rambling. But like, I think for you to like level off at, at fresh highs, you, you need you need a use case. And right now the only, the only use case that major use case that crypto is serving is like this speculative mechanism, except Bitcoin. But that's, that's I think, I think we're talking past each other. I'm not saying that it's going to level off. There's definitely going to be a crash. The question is how, how, how quickly does it, does it all fall apart? Um, you know, in 2021, it fell apart in like a week. Okay. (laughs) Like Bitcoin (laughs) was down 70% like a week and like literally right. It hit 20 K and then it completely collapsed. Um, I just think that it's going to be less violent, uh, mm. mostly because I think the, the run-up's less violent and the type of participant is less violent. Um, you know, less 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 emotional, still very emotional. Uh, I do think that there's going to be a tremendous amount of allocation post post ETF, given the way that this market has traded, um, and a lot of people are going to you know one one thing that's kind of interesting about the ETF is is it's going to make it's going to open capital flows for Bitcoin because of the ability to borrow again, yeah. you know, in, 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 in your brokerage portfolio gonna, margining for institutions, it's, it'll, it's it'll get be, cheaper to buy Bitcoin. Basically. It's going to get so much cheaper to buy Bitcoin. I mean, right now, like one of the, one of the ways that people are buying Bitcoin and why micro strategy always rips is, and why, so here's, here's an, here's actually an, an interesting thought is that the micro strategy premium to BTC once that really converges, then you start to, then then we're going to start to level off because Sailor is incentivized to keep ramming as much capital into the market as possible by selling these super overpriced converts and buying and buying BTC, and that trade gets a lot worse for him once the premium comes in. Um, and so, like basically, as long as that premium remains high, uh, you can just go out there and sell. Like, you can you can sell expensive and buy and buy cheap, and he's just going to keep doing that day 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 Close after day. Yeah, uh, it's until, another until weird that, little basis trade. Yeah, until and I mean, but it's just for sale. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, I get it. I mean, look, like I think the big narrative shift between this budding bull cycle and the previous budding bull cycle, like you you know the the fiscal and monetary situations are about to become more accommodative again that's kind of the same in 2020 and 2023 24 right so that that hasn't changed what's really changed is that unlike the previous cycle the infrastructure layer is really robust now like you the distributed computing decentralized trust like it's a really it, it's like a robust well built product this time whereas in the past it had the prospect of being a, a robust well built product but people were still paying like 300 bucks in gas to to buy an nft right now now there's there's block space available like the infrastructure works solana's worked through its kinks bitcoin's established itself um and we're sort of 
like we're there. The infrastructure works this time. Now, like I, I think we really, you know, I, I think Bitcoin's going above 100K in the next three years. But I think in order for us to get there, it's not just going to be an ETF. Like an ETF is not a use case. You need you need somebody to use this infrastructure in a really brilliant way that just sucks in tons of tons of people, tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people without realizing they're using it. Is it decentralized, you know, compute for these AI engines that are, you know, I have I have chat GPT on my screen all day asking it questions like that compute's not free. You know, is it going to be decentralized compute? Is it going to be helium, hive map or any of the stuff we talked to Tolly about? One of the all it's going to take is one of these things, and then crypto is going to, I think, be very sustainable at a, at a higher price. I just I want to maintain sobriety around this ETF. I think it's it's not a sell all of your bags on the news thing, but it's like take some profit on the news when it when the institutions can come in. That's what I, I think. Yeah, but do you, do you do you think? Uh, okay, so here's here's the thing. Every, everybody thinks that. It, do and, they? Are you yeah, kidding me? The I don't whole, know. I, I pissed I off whole, like a million people on Twitter by, you know. The, but I, I, think, the, I, think, I think the whole world thinks that, the e, you know, sell the news. Uh, okay. For, 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 for the ETF. So the question is, my, my gut feeling around this is that it either rips for like a month, like you, it either rips for two weeks to a month after and then falls apart completely once people are convinced of the new paradigm or it takes people out before, right? So we top in the next two weeks and then the ETF gets approved on the 11th, but by then it's it's too late. Momentum has shifted. Um, I, I don't know. I, I put probability of both at 50-50. I put probability that it tops on the day of the ETF at, okay, I, I'd say my probability distribution is like 40%, it, it dies early, 40%, it rips, it rips after. 20% it dies on, it dies on the day. Um, to make that a more useful, concrete thing, um, I would just be, I would, I would basically just be chipping away at exposure as things get you know, out of hand in the next, in the next one, one, to two, one to two weeks. And then I think what kicks off the crazy rally, Jonah, is a really, really, really good first day inflow into the ETF. If you get that, then you can make the case that there's going to be a lot of inflows coming. And I think that, you know, really high inflows on day one actually is probably reasonably indicative of how, how, how it's going to go over the next week or so. What, what about lackluster inflows? What, like, let's say it turns out like the ETH futures ETF. Then, then it just it falls apart in my opinion. Fucking impossible timing. Like, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to have to well, I know, I know one thing. We're, we are, we are all going to be staring at the screens very intently on the, you know, on the second week of January. I think January fifth to January tenth is when you're supposed to be stuck in front of your screen and you're just staring at it, waiting for it, waiting for that headline to hit. And between now and then, to heck with Christmas, Hanukkah. Just pick that low hanging fruit in these rotation trades. Just pay attention on crypto Twitter and rotate into stuff that hasn't quite popped yet, but will. I mean, S STX is STX has been so annoying because we've held that for a while. Um, and you know, I'm actually, I'm very bullish on STX just as, as a concept, they have their Nakamoto upgrade coming in Q1, which is going to make it the, the entire, you know, the, the entire layer very fast. Um, and they're gonna they're gonna open up SBTC, so synthetic BTC that you know will will derive security from the main from the main uh, Bitcoin chain. Um, that's you're gonna be able to mint hundreds of millions of dollars worth of that. Uh, exchanges are you know si si signed up to go go work with go work with uh, STX on this, and I think that it's just a great derivative play on BTC. But it had just gone sideways for so long. People are finally starting to wake up to it. I think Hal Hal put out a nice a nice thesis on this. If you want to go read it, it's on it's on his it's on his Twitter page. Uh, but I'm pretty I'm, I'm I'm pretty bullish on just general BTC BTC beta still. Uh, Speaking of BTC beta, Rune went bananas. Went from one to seven. Um, Rune is this weird like binary thing where it's either worthless or just parabolically rallying when the rest of crypto is parabolically rallying. It went to 11 in 2022 when Bitcoin briefly breached 40K and then it just like gapped down to basically zero. 
when it went below. So ru- yeah, uh, runes runes are weird one. The the claim is that they're the fifth largest BTC exchange. Uh, I believe it. You know, they 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 do they do swap a lot. Um, they have a reasonable amount of of of, of, T, of TVL, and I mean the product the product actually works. Um, now, yeah, now, <laughs> you know, but they got they they obviously got they obviously got attacked a bunch, and I think it just has a very scammy reputation uh, that that surrounds it. But those tend to be the coins that run the hardest, are the things that have some semblance of real product around them, but are still viewed as very scammy, because yeah. what what that what that creates is it creates a it creates a cult of behavior around that particular coin. And though it creates very, very, very strong hands and what it does is at a, at a certain point, everybody's sort of avoided it because they thought it was scammy. And now that it's proven itself to at least work on, on some level, people start rushing in, uh, r- rushing, rushing through the gates and it becomes, it becomes a frenzy, uh, as opposed to a slow, a slow buildup. Um, so, I mean, runes, runes, I uh, honestly, I don't know much about it. I feel like we could, uh, we could, we could pick it. Or pick a pick, pick a few pick a few coins for the next for the next podcast and just deep dive on them. Um, you know we can we can we can host we can host a segment that's scam or no scam. So I love that. Just like lightning round, scam or no scam, um, near. So basically, why don't we why don't we talk about how much crypto should you own at these levels? Like, should we should we try to think through for different types of people and different lifestyles? what a good crypto holding would be. Um, you know, you, you said you, you, you rarely own less than 50% unless crypto's on its knees. Um, you know, I, I owned significantly less than, than 50%, uh, in 2000, you know, when, when crypto was getting smoked. So like call it end of 2022, early 2023, you know, obviously now my, my holdings have rallied quite a lot, but like, and I bought more, but, but, you know, I, we're weirdos, right? Like we're not like normal people. So let's say that you're just a, let's say that you're a no coiner. Let's say that you completely don't get it. You think it's all just a big casino. And unlike us, we're like, yes, exactly. It's a casino. Casinos are valuable. Like, let's say that you, you kind of find stigma in it. Do you think that the average person on the street should hold a portion of their life savings on crypt in crypto, even yeah. if they don't believe hundred, hundred percent. So you, you think it's part I mean, of it's, like a well-rounded like the, portfolio? Well, at the at the end, yeah. I mean, well, at the, I do at the end obviously, the, but curious about you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just different, right? Because at the end of the day, the way that I view it is, I don't, I don't view it as some people make the argument, hey, you want to hold an uncorrelated asset, you want to hold an asset, um, you know that, and the diversification helps you. Um, just your, your it helps it helps grow, grow your portfolio. You can reallocate during times of stress in one asset from an asset that's doing well, assuming that. You know the asset that's in stress is, is undervalued, and the rebalancing will will work itself out, and you just end up with better better result better result over time. Uh, that's not some people try to make that argument for, for 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 Bitcoin. I mean, the way that I think about it is, this is a genuinely undervalued asset class. That it, it, it you know you look at you look at everything everything in crypto, and I think on a five to ten year horizon, it's just it's just undervalued, and so. It, I, I don't think I can make I can actually make a strong or significant argument from a overall portfolio construction standpoint why you should hold it. I just think you should hold it because I think it's a it's a good investment. I, I can make an emerg- I can make a portfolio construction argument, and so I think the minimum amount of crypto that every single person in you know in the world should hold, with the exception of the baby boomers and older, and I'm not talking about crypto boomers. I'm talking about like the baby boomer generation because they're retiring and they're not like trying to build wealth at this point. They're more trying to take stuff out, spend it, give it to their children. Um, I think that if you're younger than that generation, you should hold a minimum of five to 10% of your portfolio in crypto, not investment advice, just this. And here's why I think so. No matter how discomforting that is for you, I think the reason why is that Bitcoin, the benchmark crypto asset is a proven debasement hedge. And I see nothing but debasement in the future of G10 economies. So I think that every portfolio deserves a hedge against that. Furthermore, I think that it is important for 
you know, everybody to have some exposure to emerging technology. And unfortunately, the venture capital asset class isn't really tradable or accessible to most people. And I think that crypto is kind of, you know, if you were to do your research and and pick decent coins, like you could you could thousand X some stuff. But even if you just buy a broader basket of things and dip your toes in on Coinbase and own a own a lot of different tokens in small size, you're gaining exposure to distributed computing technology as an asset class that um, you know you wouldn't otherwise have in your portfolio. You're, you're, basically, if you buy the S&P 500, you're holding, you're holding a few like mega cap stocks, and then you're holding a bunch of stuff that basically doesn't rally, like old industrials. Yeah, I, I, I think so. The second part of your argument I, is sort of what I was trying to, trying to articulate, which is why I don't think it's a portfolio construction argument. It's just this, this is a good asset class to invest in because we both think it's undervalued. The first part is, is, is I think, correct. Um, and that's, that is a good argument from a portfolio construction standpoint that you, you will likely own other things in your portfolio that will be affected by, by debasement. And if you have Bitcoin, then you very likely outperform. But again, that's that's still a, a bit of a market call. Um, yeah. it, and, and that's that's what I'm trying to articulate. Is that that's that's a lot of what it comes down to at the at the end of the day. Is some of it is you know it's 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 a it's a market call in a way that I think is uh, I think the market call is as defendable, if not more defendable, than the idea that the U.S. economy will grow over the next twenty years. Uh, you know, and that that will be reflected in stock and stock market valuations, and that stock mar- and that company valuations relative to inflation will go up over time with certainty over the next ten to fifteen years, right? And that is what current portfolio construction basically bases in, entirely around. That that that's that's an underlying assumption that we're we are going to grow as a country and our economy is going to grow relative to inflation. If that's not true, then basically it all falls apart. It, it all falls apart, except maybe if it falls apart because G10 economies have overspent their GDP growth, they've mortgaged 10 or 20 or 50 years worth of growth uh, to do the sort of profligate spending that went on during COVID and shortly thereafter, like then I think Bitcoin will protect you and stocks yeah. might not, right? So that's yeah. that's why. And, I and, and that's that, 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 that's a part that I, I I agree with. I think that you you can make you can make an argument from that perspective, and you can make an argument that today it is the it, it is it is not it is not only a possible outcome, but it is becoming a likely outcome uh, that. Bitcoin will do well in the face of the actions that the G10 economies will have to take over the next 10 to 10, 10 to 15 years. Yeah, because the people who have taken these these steps, and I'm not going to go on too much of a rant here, they're the baby boomers. They're the octogenarians who run our, our economies, right? They they don't care. They're gonna they're gonna sort of like hand it off the baton pretty soon, so they can they can go nuts and party right now, and the rest of us are left holding the bag. So I think it is important to have a debasement hedge in there, and I think that debasement hedge is linked to the rest of this all these all these other tokens like we talked about all this other emerging technology. So I think there will be a buoy effect. I really do. But uh, you know, ultimately on the other side of that spectrum. If you're, you know, if you're a, a working parent and you've got two young kids and you, you know, you're working a government job and you uh, you're in debt and you have a mortgage and you're, you know, you're 150 200% like long crypto if you include your debt, like equally I I think that's pretty bananas. Like you should you, you, people need to tone it down. Uh, I mean, I think I think time time horizon is super important here, right? Um, so it, it also scales with rel- I mean, it's it's funny. It's like the like like with everything in life, it's a it's an IQ meme, but with net worth meme, <laughs> it's like right. If you, yeah. if you if you have if you have a ton of money, uh, then it makes sense to I think allocate a little bit more to crypto. Especially you know if you allocate twenty percent, you lose that twenty percent, but your day to day life won't be impacted greatly. I think that That's makes right. sense. Um, if you have like zero money. Uh, you know, pick your pick your moments, pick your pick your time. But you know that a lot of people go 100 percent long because they don't have that much money because they have you know a job that doesn't pay much and they don't have much in their bank account and they view it as a lottery ticket. Like maybe uh, maybe if I invest on this thing, I'll make five ten grand, and that'll change my whole life, right? And that's a, that's a huge mentality of, of of why of why people get into this. And then sort of the mid the mid curve is you know you make a hundred you make you know eighty to 100 k a year. Uh, you put one percent into, <laughs> in, into, into into crypto, 
right? I mean, that that's sort of the types I think uh, of people. I mean, I I would I would also advocate that if you have a long enough time horizon, so if you can invest over a five year period and that money will not impact you um, to put into crypto, then I would you know basically max out that allocation based on what you think you can live on. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, that, I couldn't that, agree that, more. That, that's really that's really the way that I think about and it. And the key I, word that you use there, Avi, is invest. Um, I you know I know some people, some good friends of mine during the 2017 ICO boom made a ton of money, mm-hmm. you know, trading in and out of stuff on Poloniex and random shitcoin exchanges, and then they kept going and bled out. Right? It's important to kind of keep a steady hand in this stuff, and just because you do well during one of these crazy bull markets doesn't make you a genius. So you you have to. You shouldn't over trade and, and piss away dough once you've made it. You should try to protect some of it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, what's kind of interesting is going to be people. This people talked about this a lot at the at the top of the last bull. So I hesitate to bring it up, but you you even you even see it reflected in what people spend their money on today and. Um, one thing that always interests me is because you have such a large class of people now, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people have made a lot of money on crypto and they all spend it in really interesting ways. Mm. Um, like I, you know, one, one thing that's, one thing that's kind of interesting is that, you know, luxury, luxury spending, uh, obviously went way up alongside crypto. And I think those, that, those two things are 90% just because the overall market went up. Um, but I know a lot of people that buy crypto tend to tend to spend their money on things like, uh, you know, Miami, Miami, Miami real estate, fancy like, supercars. Um, they, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of consumption that comes out, that comes out of crypto. Uh, so in a world where let's say Bitcoin hits a hundred K, I actually think that impacts the real world economy, uh, a ton. Like that, that, that actually like, it, it actually directs money flows because that's a hundred, that, that's like, that's like hundreds of billions of dollars that are going to be basically whisked out of thin air. It would, sh- it would shift the power dynamics of society. Like people would be, you know, the, like people, it's just human nature. When, when your buddy who used to have not that much money is suddenly, you know, 50 times richer than you and splashing out. You know, there there can be some jealousy, some animosity, some you know, and I think I think uh, you know it might impact voting. It might impact uh, you know local politics. Uh, there, there's a lot of a lot of passion and fervor around crypto, both both positive and negative. I, I think if Bitcoin went to 100k, it would be pretty insane to see how society changes. Any predictions? Like, it wouldn't just be like, oh, the Lambo dealership sold out. I think other stuff would happen, second, secondary and tertiary effects. I, I do th- I do think one positive externality is that there, you, you probably get a lot of wild ideas funded. Yeah. So, you know, you, you probably have a lot of money going into long, longevity tech. You probably have a, a lot of, just a lot more money put into, like small angels will put, put, in, put in more money to sort to tech moonshots. Um, I do, I do think you'll see, you'll see a lot more of that, uh, in, in a, in a world where, where, where crypto grants people a lot of money. I think OnlyFans is probably like the best investment you could possibly <laughs> make <laughs> in that, in that scenario. Yeah. That's kind of a crypto adjacent platform, isn't it? I just think it's going to be really funny to see how that plays out. Me too. I mean, I think, I think one of the crazy things that would happen if crypto just sent and, and people had all this money, like I see crypto as this community of like misfits, true believers, crazies, um, and also people who are just like extremely pragmatic and practical about ways that, that, you know, this peer to peer value transfer technology can improve their lives in the developing world and the developed Mm -hmm. world. And I think that if crypto goes up, it will like crypto is this group trying to make crypto happen, right? You have all these people busting their fucking asses through every bear and bull just to build products that that you know people want to use as a solution and it hasn't really except for bitcoin it hasn't really found its killer app quite yet aside from maybe nfts but like i think that i think that the richer the crypto community becomes the more empowered and able they will become to enact their 
cryptographic visions of the economy of the future. Like real world assets, take real world assets for example, okay. like a an NFT deed to your house or a, you know, a token. Yeah, actually all of that, company. all of that becomes way more likely the richer crypto people get. Yeah, because they'll all be out there like spending on lobbying and just like, f like making crypto. Or they'll just go, the or they'll just go to their private, like they'll, you make, you make a hundred million dollars, you go to your private banker at JP and you go, I don't want to buy your nonsense through a brokerage, like sell it to me and sell it to me in token form. I feel like the crypto community will be more empowered to make crypto like fulfill its promise, which is replace this entrenched shitty technology, you know, yeah. and that's, that's sort of like, it, it is, you know, software, as Anatoly said, is eating the world. And this is the financial software that, you know, suddenly it's starting to ruffle feathers. And that's why there's regulatory blowback and all these other problems that it's facing as it, as it tries to eat stuff. And I think that the richer crypto people become, the, the more they'll be, uh, you know, empowered to help crypto eat financial uh, software and economies. It's a good, good, good argument for uh, RWAs is that they're going to be forced into existence by, by crypto people. Anyway, Jonah, how is, how has crypto changed your life? Um, I was <laughs> besides making you, you know, unhappier because of your lack of sleep, moving your family around three times. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been, I've been moving around long before crypto. I think, I think crypto is fascinating because, um, it, it was my best PA trade. Solana, ironically, was my best PA trade. Uh, not this time in 2021 when it really ripped. Mm -hmm. That was that was the, the first time I'd ever like done a a proper job in my PA of anything. So it gave me some self confidence. Um, but also, you know, I turned down 100 million XRP when Ripple Labs offered it to me in 2013, and that would have been worth 320 million dollars. You know, four years later could have started a trading company off of that. So yeah, it's I, a lot I of think XRP to offer you. Yeah. So basically, and that was just their opening offer. Like I probably could have haggled it higher. The the guys who took it, uh, be, you know, they started GSR. They ended up getting seated with 150 million. Um, but, you know, I, I worked for the R when we were both at Goldman and GSR. So yeah, basically like <clears throat> crypto, yeah, I, I bought a bunch of Bitcoin in 2013, paying you know seven hundred dollars, and then sold it all at four hundred dollars. Like it's made me a better trader. I, I've just just from stumbling and failing, and then succeeding and missing things. It's it's made me a better business person and a better trader, and it's also introduced me to some phenomenal people like you, uh, because it is a community of traders that cares. Like in in oil. Uh, you know, there, there are a few traders that care, but in crypto, there are a lot of traders that care. And that's, that's exciting. It's a, it's a better community, you know, it is, it's, it is a phenomenal compute community and I'm very, very happy to be very happy to be a part of it. Likewise. Um, as always, it's awesome chatting with you. Yeah. Great, great talking again. Again, none of this is financial advice We're more just spitball, but, um, you know, thank you for joining. Yeah. Please, please do not take this as financial advice ever. We're both idiots. <laughs> we have no idea what we're doing. We consistently lose money <laughs> and we just do this podcast to pay our bills. Fun. If only it paid any bills. Um, yeah, yeah, we're do you fumbling get, around. Do you, get, do, you get, do you get paid for this? Because I don't get paid for this. Maybe Blockworks is keeping it all. <laughs> they are. We don't have any sponsors, though. Maybe that's why we're not getting paid. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's, good, it's, good, it's a good point. <laughs> um, well, if you want to sponsor the podcast, don't reach out to us because I don't think. Yeah, we're anonymous. Talk to Blockworks, I guess. Let them manage that. Um, all right. Good times, everybody. Yep. See you in two weeks. Adios. Adios.